Peter Lewis is here, all the way from Dallas, Texas. He brought Aaron along with him. There's a crew from Cincinnati, including his administrator, Kate Powell. So we're so excited to have some family from Cincy here. Welcome to the north. So we heard that 70 dividing line. We get way more snow than you. So uh, anyway, welcome to the north. It's, 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 it's bold to enter here after November, uh, but you're welcome back anytime. Uh, man, we're super honored uh, that, that Peter is here, and uh, he's busy. He's got five kids, all right? Uh, he has a, a beautiful wife at home. It was yesterday's first soccer game. He missed it as a coach and a dad, uh, so uh, unknowingly that the schedule got released. But we're so honored that you guys are here, that you gave us your weekend, and we're praying that it's just as fruitful for you guys as it is and has been for us. And um, just so you know, Peter is a uh, teaching pastor Upper Room Dallas, was one of the co-founders. He started Brave Heart Ministries. But just the reality is that is not why we invited you, Peter. We we, we honor what the Lord has on your life. We honor the anointing that's in you. We honor the message, the, the story, the thing that's in your heart. And just so you know, we, we met in 2016 for the first time here in Tip City for Revive Ohio. Uh, it was going to Dallas. He came up here to check it out and be a part of it. Uh, matter of fact, we discovered last night he was on Lydia's like breakout team hitting the streets and going to the park. Uh, we met, but he had the flu. And I was just like, ever since then, I've been drawn to him, even not knowing his affiliation with different things. And it's just been on my heart, and I feel like the Lord's timing has been perfect. And, and here he is. And we found out that he loves hunting. Um, he loves coffee. He loves all the things that are dear to my heart. So uh, who knows? This may be a very long-term covenantal uh, friendship. So, But anyway, Peter, it's been an honor to get to know you this weekend. Come on up. Let's welcome him up a room style. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good morning. You believe that? Five kiddos? I'm older than I look. Amen. All right. Well, I'm relatively just a normal guy. I'll give you some color commentary about me before we hop into the word. Um, just because I think it's helpful when you come to a new place, you know somebody uh, like Pastor Aaron mentioned. Um, I have a wife and, and five kids whom I love dearly. I've been in ministry for about a decade, and uh, I'm 37 for those of you who are going to be bothered by that the whole time. Um, and, and yeah, my, my heart and desire, uh, I love the body of Christ. I love the church. Um, I love every flavor, every denomination, every nuance, uh, because they have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus' bride, and we got to stop throwing stones at each other. Amen. Um, and so I'm just so honored to be in this house. I wanted to honor uh, Pastor George, uh, the patriarch here. Um, I heard an amazing story um, that he was sharing with, with me yesterday about when he founded this church. Um, it, Greg? Why did I call you George? I mean, George is a good name, too. So Pastor Greg shared with me, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. It's Greg, right? You're not just messing with me. I know you guys now. Y'all will mess with me. These guys will mess with you. The Simmons family. <laughs> um, he shared with me the story of how this was founded 22, 3, 4, 5 years ago. And um, how they purchased a building back over there, and um, he told me how they would, they didn't have the money to repair the roof that had a leak, uh, but he would replace the ceiling tiles after it rained, um, because they could do that, and he would do that. And, um, and you may think, well, that's a very normal thing to do, but um, I want you to know that that type of history and faithfulness and legacy um, you're experiencing the fruit of that today um, in this house, the presence of God that you feel. So I want to honor you. I want to honor you for your faithfulness. Um, you're to be honored um, and to be praised for your life of, of service to God and for the kingdom of God. And so I really do. I am humbled and honored to be here to sow into this house. And Lord willing, be an encouragement to you this morning. Amen. So just know this is a special place. Like Jesus told his disciples, he said, you're reaping where you didn't sow. 
So there's fruit here that you got to taste of this morning of the presence of God, the love of God, the, the, the worship, the, the fellowship that, that you didn't work for. You got to just show up and experience it. And not every church is like that. Amen. And so this is a really special place. And so don't allow familiarity with those who you know. You're like, I know them. He's the commissioner. Or I know him. He's the fire chief. To, to allow familiarity to breed in your heart and go, man, I don't know about these guys. This is a special place, and so just honor it as such. Amen? All right. Put your hand on your heart. Um, Lord, we do pray that you would take the first place in our hearts. And Lord, we ask that you would breathe upon your word, that you would speak to us. Um, God, every high place, everything that has been exalted above your name, uh, God, we, we bring before you and just ask by your spirit that you would bring it down. And Jesus, that your name and your nature and your goodness um, and who you are would be enthroned in our hearts. God, we would, we would find ourselves in the center of your love this morning, in the center of your affection. And I just pray, uh, God, a special grace over those who came this morning needing just a miracle, needing a breakthrough. I felt as we were singing that song, Lord, about, about the breakthrough that there were many crying out, uh, asking for that. And I ask right now, Spirit of the living God, would you come and would you do that now? For those of you who need healing in your bodies, just receive the breakthrough. Um, Jesus is here. His kingdom is at hand. Uh, just be healed. Be delivered in your mind. Be delivered in that relationship. Just let the Spirit of the living God flow over you. No show, no no big thing, just by His Spirit, by His Spirit right now. If you've got that headache, let it go now in Jesus' name. Lord, just put everyone in a place of peace and shalom so they can receive uh, Your Word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Say amen like you got a breakthrough. Amen. There we go. That's better. Did anyone get a breakthrough? You know, just want to shout amen. Oh, you can check it out. All right, back there in the sound. Um, Ephesians 4, if you want to open your Bible, I'm just going to share my heart a little bit. Um, like Aaron mentioned, I, I love the gospel. Um, I believe the gospel is not just for the lost, uh, but I believe it's the primary message for uh, the church. Amen? Uh, because the gospel is a revelation of who Jesus is. Um, that's what Paul said. Um, it's, it's, it's ongoing. It's ever uh, coming to us by the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, my passion, my zeal is to come to churches and just preach the living gospel. Um, if you're like me, I grew up in the church, and uh, there was a lot of things that uh, I didn't know that I wish I had been taught. And so um, this uh, chunk of scripture here in Ephesians 4 is really, um, I would say, fundamentals. I believe we're living in times in the church where we need to get back to the fundamentals. Um, we need to get back to some some basic things that are core to our faith. And so i really just going to share my heart with you. I'm going to open the scriptures a little bit, and we'll just trust the Lord to lead us. Um, you know, I'll share this with you. Sometimes in our culture, we're always wanting the new thing, right? We're always wanting, like, the next thing. Well, what's the next thing? What's the new thing? And, and next things and new things are good um, if you've got the main thing. Right? Next things and new things are not good if you don't have the main thing. Like, like water is really important. And, and if I come and present water, like how many of you have ever, some, you've been so thirsty and someone's like, hey, do you want some water? And you're like, I know that. Like I know, I know all about water. I don't need water. I know about water. So no matter how much you know about water, you need it. It's necessary. And, and if you're... Um, I don't know if you guys experience being hangry. That means you're so hungry you get angry. Uh, we have little kids, and they get hangry a lot. And there's certain things, like just basic things, when you don't have food and water and sleep, you don't get rest, like you start acting not yourself. And it's the same in the church. And when you don't have the basic, you know, necessary things that we were intended to actually live the Christian life on, you get you get hangry and you start acting not like someone who's been born of God, filled with the Spirit, and in covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen? And so I want us to get back to that. I want to just give you some, uh, some real practicals, if you will. And so um, I told the sound guys uh, Ephesians 4, starting in 17, but we're going to start in 15. 
Um, and just to give you a little context, um, this is uh, on the wake of describing sort of the, the purpose of the church and church leadership. Um, and so we're going to start in Ephesians 4, 15, and I'm going to read this. Uh, we'll do a couple verses and then talk about it and just kind of keep going here. So um, Paul says this to the church. He says, rather, um, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way. Say every way. Into him who is the head, into Christ. Wow. Verse 16, from whom the whole body, that's you and I, joined and held together by every joint. Say every joint. With which it is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is amazing. This is kind of, if you make points and have points, I typically don't have points. If I do, they just come from the scriptures. Point number one is speaking the truth in love. This is foundational. What does that mean? Uh, it's not any truth. It's the truth about who Jesus is. It's the truth about what he's done. It's the truth about why he did it. So the truth that we were intended as a body to be speaking to one another in love is the truth about who Jesus is. What does this look like? This looks like when someone's going through something, they're going through a trial, um, you're having coffee with them. The regular conversation on our lips should be describing and reminding one another that Jesus died on a cross for our sins, that he washed us in his blood, that he made covenant with us, that he filled us with the Holy Spirit, that he's advocating for you, that he's praying for you, that he's alive for you. And, and in that truth, that perspective will help one another walk through the trial. Because right now what's happening, if we're honest, we give a lot of opinions about people's trials. We give a lot of what we think and what's happened in our lives, which is good. That's good commentary, but that's an opinion. See, the truth about Jesus will never fail. And there is a power and a grace that comes that will actually begin to flow because the Bible calls us a body, and this is weird because we don't like to be, you know, this close. <laughs> Like, we don't like to be that connected to one another. If we're honest, we like to kind of come and, and, and really, and then go. But like the scriptures speak of that there is a belonging to one another, that we're a body, which means there are joints, which he describes. And so look at this. He, he, we're speaking the truth in love. We are to grow up into him, meaning we collectively as a people are meant to look more and more like Jesus. That is your great calling in life. You should say amen. It's a high calling. Did you know that? Did you know the point of Christianity, the point of being born again, the whole purpose of being washed in the blood and filled with the Holy Spirit is that, is that God himself would form the image of his son in you so that when people see you, they see Jesus. This is the purpose of Christianity. This is, what you were, this is what you came to God for. You didn't come to God so that you could just go to heaven one day. You didn't just come to God to have your sins forgiven and get fire insurance and not go to hell. Praise God, we're not going to hell. Amen. I thank God for that. I thank God for eternity in heaven. But that's not the highest end. The highest end is that God, you and I, would become one with him. And through our union, the world would look at a people marked by his presence, his character, his nature, and that they would see something in us that's not of this world. This is your inheritance. And you say, but Peter, how do I get that? Do I, do I've got to, do I, like, it seems such a, a hard road to get there. I feel so encumbered by my flesh in this world. This is the instruction for us. But in order for us to get there, you have to start with the end. You can't, you can't deviate. You can't say, well, come on, brother, that can't really be the end. It is. He designed us in Christ, in his son, to look like him. And so you've got to ask yourself this question, how much like Christ, how much really like him can I become in this life? Think about it. How much of God's character and his nature and his beauty 
in his kindness, in his patience, in his power, in his authority, in his dominion, how much, listen to this question, how much of himself is he able to form in you? Is God able? If that was his desire, is he able to form himself in you? Think about it. I understand that you can't do it in your strength. Let's settle that. <laughs> some, of you, some of you get discouraged at the thought of walking like Jesus because you're used to walking in the flesh. If the thought of walking like Christ discourages you, it's because you're, you're accustomed to walking at some measure in the flesh. Meaning, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't walk like that. I can't walk like Jesus. That seems like a high bar. It is a high bar for your flesh. But if he crucifies your flesh, buries it in a grave, and you're resurrected with him in newness of life, and he fills you with the Holy Ghost, and he says, actually, you can live your life not for me, but through me. Woo! Now, now it becomes really, really fun. Really, really fun. Because it's not up to me. It's not how strong I can get in my flesh. It's how yielded I can get to the Spirit of God. Man, one of the ways you go so fast in the kingdom is you wave the white flag and you go, Dad, I can't do it. Man, I can't do it. So we're to grow up into him, into Christ, from whom, so, so Christ the head is from whom the whole body joined, held together by every joint with it which it is equipped. I want you to see this. With a head, it says this, that the life and the supply of God, the supply of grace, the supply of spirit, it comes from the head. Doesn't come from me, doesn't come from Pastor Aaron, doesn't come, it comes from the head. What you need comes from the head. It does not come from this pulpit. Come on. It, God can use this pulpit to connect you to the head, and that's the, only, that's the only way this pulpit will be useful, is if this pulpit connects you to the head from whom the supply of the spirit, the grace, the nourishment that we need to grow up, it comes from the head. If you come to church expecting life from the pulpit and not from the head, you will be disappointed. Just save you a lot of trouble. You can go home. If your hope's in them, just go home. You'll be disappointed. Just save us all a bunch of trouble. It's not for you. You come here for him, for God. And the best these people know how, we know how, we are trying to labor for him to connect you to the head, but we will let you down. Oh, I promise you that. If you can just settle that, there are more people wandering away from the church because men let them down. Women let them down, but God doesn't let us down. He died for us. He shed his blood for us. He, 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 he is the kindest, most loving, patient, beautiful one there is. And, and he is the point. And so when you come in your heart, guard your heart, because watch this, it's the joint. To have a joint, there has to be a place of connection. And so the supply of God from the head comes through our connection. He supplies us through one another. This is so big. He supplies his grace and his love and his spirit through our connection. This coffee and connect time, you're like, oh, neat, coffee and connect. That's where the joints are formed. That's where you get to actually know someone. And when you open your heart and you figure out where they're from and you begin to exchange, I want you to know something supernatural happens. There's an exchange of life. There's an exchange of God's spirit, and now there's a connection through which his spirit and life can flow. If there's no connection, if you guard your heart, I loved what Nicole was saying, if, you're, if your heart's pulled away and isolated, you could be in this room and your heart not present. And if that's the case, the life of God can't flow to you or through you because he works in his body through one another. Amen? All right. So keep going. Um, and it... it Every joint which, with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So the picture is really simple. 
It's this company of people, and they're constantly reminding each other of who Jesus is, what he's done, why he's done it. They're loving one another. They're speaking the truth. They're keeping everyone's eyes above the prize. And in that place, there's something called the grace of God, the spirit of God, the love of God. And it will actually cause you to grow up into him. It happens supernaturally. It's holy. It's like... It's powerful. This is why the Bible says, do not forsake the meeting together. Why? Because something happens when you gather and you speak the truth and you get in the word of God. And what we're doing right now, there is a, I want you to sense this and and understand this. It's holy what we're doing. This morning is set apart. Jesus is here. Did you know that? Like the son of God, you're like, I don't feel him here, but he's here because this is what he said. He said, if you gather in my name, I will be there in your midst. But Peter, I don't feel him here. It's not about we live by faith, not by sight or by feelings. I'm called a believer, not a feeler. My feelings are awesome and they indicate what I'm believing. And so if I'm believing something that's not true, I need to repent. He's here. The Son of God is here. He's here. And he's superintending this gathering. And he knows what you need. And he's, and he's connecting you with some, and he's supplying you with his spirit. And something will happen in this, not just this meeting, but as you go and stay connected, there is this like energy of God, this, this Holy Spirit that will build you up and make you look more like him. And that's amazing. Now keep reading, because this is where it gets intense and where, where I think we have an intersection with, with where we're at in this world today. Um, verse 17 Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. Wow. When he says Gentiles, he's just basically talking like the world. Stop walking like the Instagram influencers, (laughs) the people on the, the, the news channels that are always complaining and grumbling. He's like warning them. I'm I'm testifying to you in the Lord. Don't walk like these people why 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 not like them because their minds how they think is futile break this down their thinking is futile what does futile thinking mean it means you can think about it and it doesn't connect you with the life-saving glorious power of god there are things that you can think about that will connect you to god and there's things that you think about that will disconnect you from god it's just, it's, it's Christianity 101. And I'm, I feel very sobered by this because I feel like this is something, if you're like me, I was never taught that, that what my mind dwelled on actually either connected me with God or disconnected me from God. It, it seems like a small thing for such a large consequence. If I'm dwelling on the things of this earth, if I'm just marinating on futile things, I will literally... I will literally just be, be darkened in my heart and I will live in this world of my own making. Now keep reading. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. This sounds so intense. And it's real. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. Now listen, we read that and we think, well, that's not me. <laughs> and, and praise God, I, it's probably not. But when I read this, I, I thought, man, Lord, I don't want any of this in me. I don't want a callous heart. I don't, want, I don't want to be ignorant and disconnected from the life, alienated from the life of God. Is there a scarier phrase in all the Bible as a believer? Alienated from the life of God. Why? Because they're darkened in their understanding. They literally don't understand Christ. They don't understand covenant. Their mind is set on earthly things. And so I say this to you just as an exhortation, as an encouragement. Um, a lot of what you're hoping to experience in the faith will shift when you shift your mind. 
and you begin to set it on things that are above in heavenly places and you think, Peter, that doesn't seem practical. And I wanna tell you as a believer in Jesus Christ, it is the most practical thing you can do is you can pause in the midst of losing your job, in the midst of financial issues, like all the things in life, what's happening in our nation. I mean, there are, there are landmines every day that, that we have to, listen, I'm not saying put your head in the sand and don't know what's happening in the world. That's not the answer. I'm saying if you're gonna look at what's happening in the world, make sure you look at it through the lens of the person and the man, Jesus Christ. Because he who sits on his throne laughs. Why do the nations rage? All the nations are raging right now, but there's one on a throne. And he's never up for re-election. He forever reigns. He forever reigns, and we belong to his kingdom. And so listen, I want you to know this. I carry a a tremendous, like, tension and angst for what's happening in our nation. Like, like, there's just so many things to be, like, grieved about and to, like, to pray into and to to ask God for perspective. But here's what I know. I'm, I'm grieved simultaneously, but I'm at peace because I'm seated with him. And I can look at what's happening in our nation and in the nations through a perspective of the kingdom, knowing that ultimately there is a king above all kings and that he's sovereign and that he's good and that, and that he's faithful. And that like for my children, I feel to say this because this is a house with kids, like, like listen, don't fear the world your children are growing up in. He put them on this earth for this reason. Your children, listen, your children were born for this hour. There are Davids and Daniels and Abrahams and Sarahs and mighty men and women of God in our children. And I believe God wants us to prepare our our children for the path that they will be on, not the path for them. Right? We can spend our time trying to make the path all nice and smooth for them and make sure there's no crooked places, right? That's a temptation as a dad. I'm like, man, I gotta make sure every school, everything is like right and good, which is awesome. But there's something even more powerful than that. You prepare your child for the path. And you prepare them and equip them to actually walk, no matter if there's a high place or a low place or a crooked place, man, the spirit of the living God's gonna lead, lead my kids. He's going to empower them to walk and overcome the challenges that they're going to face in their generation. Amen? All right, it gets better here. So watch this. So, so he gives them kind of a, a one encouragement to speak the truth. He really exhorts them. This is a church that he's telling them, remind you, he's talking to a church. He's saying, guys, I have to remind you to stop walking like the world. Okay, so none of us are above this. This is like a church pastored by Paul. And you would think, well, man, they, they should be super sanctified. No, he had to remind them, hey, guys, y'all need to stop acting a fool. Y'all are messing up. Like, I'm hearing how you're talking. I'm seeing how you're walking. And, like, y'all are starting to dip, you know, dip your foot in and dabble with the Gentiles. You're starting to look a little bit like the world. I'm not saying that to you. I'm just saying there's a humility that we come to the Scriptures. We watch our hearts. Amen? So watch. He gives this strong thing, and this fires me up. He goes, but that's not the way you learned Christ. Meaning, I didn't teach you Christ that way. Verse 21, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, he mentions taught twice, as the truth is in Jesus. Now, verse 22, 23, and 24, I believe, is the foundation, like, fundamentals of what Paul was teaching the early church. Like, this is, this was the fundamentals. I believe that because he says, he, he, he's saying, hey, stop walking like the world. Why? Because I taught you Christ. Like, you should know better. I taught you. And he now unpacks what he was teaching the churches. And when I first saw this, I got really fired up because I was like, wow. Like, how many of you are like, I would have loved to really been in some of those early Bible studies with, the, with Paul and the churches. Like, that would be awesome. And I believe this is a glimpse of what he taught them. All right? Look at verse 22. This is it. This is the big drum roll, please. Bum, 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 bum. To put off 
your old self. He goes, I taught you to put off your old man, your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Now listen to me. This is the biblical prescription for anything in your life that came through the first Adam. So if you see something, you see some flesh pop up in your life. In your marriage, with your kids, you snap at them, get angry, you're getting frustrated at your job, you're tending to grumble, to get worried, whatever the case may be. Like how many of you, there's some things in your flesh that you're like, man, I wish, you know, I've been wrestling, I've been wrestling that sucker. Come on, where are my wrestlers at? I know that y'all like to wrestle. Listen, you stop wrestling and put it off. Like, what's the difference? Wrestling with your old man is you trying to do things to overcome it. Well, if I, if I read enough, if I pray enough, if I, if I share my faith enough, if I have my quiet time enough, then I'll get sanctified. No, 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 no. Your old man, watch this, this will change your life. I promise this is worth the price of admission. Your old man, all of it, even the parts that manifested this morning, was nailed onto a cross 2,000 years ago. And then, if that wasn't enough, he buried it in a grave. You say, I thought, I thought Jesus did that. He did do that. And he didn't just do it for you. He did it as you. And this, this is the great shift needed in the body of Christ today. Many people believe that Jesus Christ died for them. I don't meet very many who actually believe that he died as them. Think about this. I want you to ponder this, and if this really hits your heart, you will get drunk on the Spirit and run around this room and end up running through that wall. I'm, I promise you, everything you've been trying to overcome in your flesh the grace of God, the goodness of God, the invitation from God is to say this, it was nailed on a cross and you're free. You're free. But what do I do, Peter? But what do I do? You put it off. How? On what authority? On the authority of the cross and the grave of Jesus Christ. I put it out of my mind. I, I, for years of my life, I struggled with pornography and lust and addiction and God delivered me praise God amen and when the old man temptations began to rise up it was like like a like a holy stiff arm Heisman to the old man going man you are going to stay right there where you belong why because it has been nailed to a cross and buried in a grave and that's not who I am anymore I no longer identify with my flesh in the fallen man and we have to stop it in our language well brother we're only human are you? I thought you were born of God. Only human? Paul rebuked the Corinthian church. He goes, when you're comparing one another, he goes, are you not acting in a mere human way? Why are you not looking and acting more like Christ? Oh, come on. It's not, it's not a heavy yoke. It's free in the Lord because it's by the Spirit. All right, so watch this. So number one, this is offensive. This is the offense of the cross. I know some of you are offended, and I love you. <laughs> I love you. I'm not afraid to offend you, okay? Listen, the remedy for your sin, for your flesh, is to put it off. Literally, that's it. You cannot minister to your old man. Stop it. Seriously, stop ministering to one another's old man. Well, this is just happening. Okay, well, let me put it away. Put it off. Put it where it belongs. I want you to see that your anger, your lust, your passions, all of that was nailed to cross. Your, your, everything that you feel like is in you, a part of you, was nailed to that cross and buried in a grave. Mm -mm -mm -mm. About eight of you. Come on, Lord. I'm with you. Eight. I'll come down there. I'll wrestle you till you get this because this is good news. Like, if you get this, you get free of performance Christianity. 
You just get intoxicated in the goodness of God. It's too good to be true. You can put it off. Now watch this. It gets better. He says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's what I'm challenging you with right now. That's what's hopefully happening is you're beginning to, to by the Holy Spirit, think of yourself differently. He says you got to put the old man off, but then listen, when you put the old man off, you're so used to thinking like the old man, you actually have to be renewed in your mind. Your mind has to be upgraded in its thinking. If you've, been, if you've been lustful your whole life, if you've been impatient your whole life, if you've been a worrier your whole life, and you've been known as that and received ministry for that, listen, it will, be some, it will take some time for you to renew your mind and go, man, okay, is Jesus lustful? No. So what's the opposite? Like if, 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 you're, being, if you're being controlled by lust of food or alcohol or, or you know, sexual addiction whatever the case may be if you're being controlled by that what's the what's the other what's the christ-like remedy for that purity and whole desires and and like like satiated and satisfied and contentedness right and so watch this when you got born again all of that nastiness was nailed to a cross buried in a grave and the bible says you and i were resurrected with him in newness of life and we received the holy spirit do you know the holy spirit is god of oh, eight of you oh my goodness we're gonna... so so when you received the holy spirit you received god and with God, you received some, some characteristics of God. You received his desires. You received his nature. You received the capacity to be like him. Oh, my. So your mind, so you can actually begin to think of yourself and go, wow, I'm actually whole. I, I'm actually satisfied in my desires. I'm actually not a lustful person. I'm actually a patient person. I'm actually kind. I'm actually humble. I'm actually, I'm actually really healthy in my relationships. I actually handle betrayal well. I actually handle accusation well. Not because I'm doing it in my strength, but because God is in me and I'm identifying with the Son of God and I have been crucified with Christ. Oh, come on. It's on your pillows. It's on your coffee mugs. It's got to get in your heart. I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. What are you saying, I no longer live? My old man is no longer who I am. I will not associate with the fall of man, my sin, my flesh. That's not me. The life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Which means I begin to, to look within and go, God, if you gave me your spirit, then your nature, your likeness, your power in every situation I face, I can, if I give you sway by faith, you can actually come out of me. Let me show you how this works. I was, uh, some, some years of my life, or it was a couple years ago, I was getting frustrated with my boys. Like, how many of you know little boys, they'll just push your buttons, you know, like, like, are you listening, you know? Like, and I was getting angry, and like, I don't know if you've ever done this, probably no one here, but I was trying to control them through my anger and through the volume of my voice. That was, you know, no one here has done that, but I, I was just trying to control their behavior through my volume and asserting myself, and I was getting angry, and I began to recognize, wow, that's not Jesus, you know? Like, just, ooh, that's not Jesus. Like, yelling at my boys is not Jesus. They're, you know, six and four, and, and, uh, and I remember one day I was reading in Matthew and, and it was just having my quiet time and Jesus said, he goes, I'm, I'm gentle and I'm lowly of heart. And, he, and I read that and it like, has the scripture ever like jumped out and slapped you? If it hasn't, you haven't lived. <laughs> if you haven't read the word and it just jumped out and just smacked you with the back of his hand, like it's, that's life, you know? And so this phrase just came out. It just, he's like, I'm gentle and lowly in heart. And I just, it like kept playing in my in my head, and uh, a few days later, uh, my boys were you know I told them to pick up or hey it's time to pick up get ready for dinner, how are we doing oh we're doing good oh I'm doing so good on time, man, if y'all get finished before I do just bless you. <laughs> so, so a few days later I um I, I had been really grieved because I was like man like I don't 
I don't like this side of me. You know what I mean? Like how many of you, you're like, you see it and you're like, that's ugly. Like that's, I don't want that. Um, and I was like, I don't want that. And, and so I'd asked them to pick up. We were getting ready for dinner and they were just jacking around doing WWF on the couch or something, you know. Like, what are you thinking, you know? Your mom's making dinner. And so I'm, I feel the same feelings of anger begin to, like, rise up, and I'm about to, like, discipline them out of anger. And I hear this whisper, like, I'm gentle. Literally, like, and I didn't hear it here, but it just, it came up out of, in my spirit. I'm gentle. And I want you to see, I want you to know how this works. Because I'm not, trust me, I'm, I'm born again. I'm a saint in his eyes, but like I wrestle like y'all do. <laughs> I still felt the feelings of frustration and anger in that moment. But there was this other contrasting voice and tug and pull that was an invitation. Listen, it was an invitation to be like him in that moment. But I didn't feel like him. Are you with me? I didn't feel like him, but I was being invited to be like him. And so I remember, I remember what happened. I had a crossroads. I was like, man, I can give over to this, but deep down I was like, I don't want to give over to that. I want to be like you. And, and here was the cool thing. God wasn't giving me patience. The patient one was trying to come out of me. There's a big difference. Well, God, I need patience. No, you don't. You have all the patience you need dwelling in you by the Holy Spirit. You need to just let him out. And so I, I remember what I did. I said, I said, I got down like this because it's hard to be angry on your knees. And I was like, I was like, Isaac, Sam. I was like, come here. I was like, come here. And I'm like, I'm trying to give myself to gentleness, right? And I'm like, I'm like, y'all come here. I'm gonna give you a hug. And I just like hugged him. And I said, I love you. And I said, we gotta pick up. <laughs> you know? And and I remember in that moment, it was like the father was like, yeah, yeah, he's believing. Like, yes, it was an act of worship. It was an act of warfare. It was simple. There was no fanfare. I didn't see any angels or seraphim. It was just in the run of life. But in that moment, do you know what happened? I said yes to Jesus in a real way. And he began to form his heart of a lamb. And I began to press into that. I'm like, wow, Lord, you're gentle. You're lowly in heart. And I begin to embrace that. I'm like, well, if you're gentle and lowly in heart, then that means I'm gentle and lowly in heart. And I begin to just embrace that. And listen, God is a ninja. Um, I'll just tell you this right now. You're not going to like this. So just, I don't know, brace yourself. He will put you in environments so that he can come out. And your flesh will think that it's a terrible, torturous environment. And it is for your flesh. But it's the right environment for him to come out. It's the right environment for you to say yes to him and actually discover that you're more than your flesh. And that you have, you have a covenant with the living God and he'll actually subdue your emotions. Now, can I tell you that since that moment, my emotions, like it, something shifted over a six-month period of leaning into that where he subdued my anger, what felt like anger, and it like withered on the vine. And it like died. But I didn't like, I didn't flex my way. I didn't get anger ministry. Like I, I, just, I just said yes to gentleness. And the grace of God and the spirit of God through dependence and humility began to form the nature of Christ in me. And I began to think of myself differently with my boys. Are you with me? That's how it happens. That's the renewal in the spirit of your mind where it becomes normal to think of yourself like this is what will be uncomfortable for a lot of you is to think that you can actually be like him and that that's not arrogant or proud or dishonoring to God like it feel you feel uncomfortable thinking that you're gentle like him that you're loving like him right because your flesh and even sometimes religion tells us well you can't really be like him and eh. <laughs> you can and not only can you that's what brings him the most glory 
that's the most beautiful act of humility is when you actually receive God's assessment of you. The greatest act of humility is when God says, I love you, you look like me, you're beautiful to me. I'm so proud of you. And you go, really? And he's like, yeah. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live as though that's true. And it's hard and it destroys pride because many of us actually exalt our own flesh and our own weakness over the grace of God. There's people in this room and you exalt your flesh and your brokenness and you think it's bigger than the grace of God. You think, you think your struggle is stronger than the blood of Jesus and the cross and the grave. Let me ask you, let me ask you, how much of your sin and your brokenness were you able to sneak through the cross of Jesus Christ and the grave? Because if you're on this side of the cross and you're still identifying with that, you're trying to sneak through some of your brokenness through the cross of Jesus and his grave. And ultimately what you're saying is, God, I don't believe that your cross was enough or your grave was enough for my brokenness and my sin. And if we can acknowledge that, what will happen is we'll come back to the cross, back to the work of the Lamb of God, and we'll say, wow, I need to pay much closer attention to what happened there. And I need to actually in, in, engage and interact with the work of the Messiah, maybe like I've never done before. And we're gonna have a chance to do that here as we close. Um, the last, and I've, I've already kind of given the example, verse 24, um, it's threefold. You put off your old self, you renewed in your mind, verse 24, and you put on, this is in your Bible, so just take a deep breath, this is so gnarly. You put on your new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. This is Christianity 101. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm no longer going to walk in complaining and grumbling and all the things of this world. I'm not going to get entangled in civilian affairs. I'm going to let the word of God and my neighbors allow me to think of myself differently. But then in secret, I'm going to put on my new self. I'm actually going to put on Christ. I'm going to try him on for size. And if I see something in Christ, I have permission to put it on. You can open the wardrobe of Christ. Imagine his characteristics and his nature was like a giant wardrobe, like a giant coat closet. And you could, and you could just go explore it. I, this is prophetic, actually. This is a vision I'm having. You open it up. Okay, I want you to just close your eyes. Let's close with this. Can we have some amazing pads? And I loved that violin. I don't know if she's still here. That would be heavenly doesn't have to come but oh she's here you were so good at that thing isn't she amazing what a gift so this is where we experience what we've just been talking about here okay um so i want you to close your eyes for a minute and i want you to picture um if you've ever seen like I guess I can say this. You ever seen like MTV Cribs and there's those big houses with the big walk-in closets and I have this picture and Jesus is, he's welcoming us to his house and he's taking us back into his, his closet and this thing is awesome. It's got shoes, the gospel of peace. It's got robes of righteousness all hung up. It's got jackets of patience, shirts of love, dresses of dignity pants of restoration there's everything there and he says the Bible says I want you to put off your old man to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on your new self which was created after the likeness of God the likeness of God. And the invitation this morning is twofold. Is you're going to put off that thing that's been plaguing you. And here's how you put it off. It's very simple. You just confess. You, you, you see the cross. You see the work of Jesus. You have to see it. You can't do it in your strength. I want you to see it. I want you to see that thing that you don't want in your life. It could be a pornography addiction. It could be... Uh, something that you've done in your past. It could be, 
I don't know what it is. It's that thing that you feel the most guilty, ashamed about. And I want you to see Jesus hanging there on the cross. And it was that purpose. He wanted to take your sin, that brokenness, that that thing from the fall. And he says, I died here for you to take this from you so that you wouldn't carry it in your soul anymore. I don't want you carrying this. This is not yours. I, I paid for it. And I want you to give it to him. I want you to say, Lord, that's yours. I don't want this in my life anymore. Come on, with your own words, from your heart, however it looks like for you. Say, God, I I don't want this in my life anymore. I don't want this in my heart. Lord, the best I know how, I'm putting this thing away. I'm putting anger away. I'm putting lust away. Putting disappointment away. Putting betrayal away. Putting accusation away. I'm putting insecurity away. I'm putting the fear of man away. I'm putting the idolatry of finances and money away. I'm putting the idolatry of of my business away. I'm putting the idolatry of my successes away, Lord. I'm putting all of this stuff away that's plagued me. Come on, with your own lips, just take a minute. to say it loud or your neighbor can hear you but there is something about just confessing it before the Lord. Lord I don't want this anymore. It's it's called repentance. You're just turning from it. put it off you may feel a sense of peace you may feel a sense of like man I don't have to wrestle that anymore it's just something if if I hear some of you saying in the accuser well, what if it what if it pop, pops up again you just put it away again you put it away you put off your old man and so just can you just thank him for a minute that your old man can be put away. It, it, it seems so simple, but it came at a high price. He had to actually shed his blood and allow his body to be torn, innocent, spotless, and blameless, so that you and I in 2021 could say, Lord, I'm dead to that. So just thank him for a minute. Just, Lord, thank you that I'm dead to that. Thank you that I'm free. Thank you that I'm not what I do. Thank you that I'm not bound by my flesh anymore. Thank you that I'm not ruled by the lusts of my flesh and carnal desires, Lord. And so we're here at his closet. We feel a little vulnerable, a little exposed because some of these things we put away, we've we've actually built an identity around. You've actually received ministry for it for so long, some of you are going to have to stop receiving ministry for it. You're going to have to start connecting relationally in a healthier way. And I want you to just wander through his closet. And if you can see it in him, you're allowed to put it on. Kindness, purity, gentleness, self-control, joy oh there's a garment of praise in there there's a garment of praise in there that some of you need to grab those of you who've been stuck under complaining and grumbling criticizing and accusing there's a handful of garments of praise and celebration life's too short to grumble it's too short to complain So just grab it and put it on. Just try it on for size. Just what that looks like for me is you think, what would I look like if I was joyful? How would I do my job? How would I be as a son, as a daughter, as a husband, as a spouse, as a friend, as a member of Upper Room, Ohio? What would I look like if I put on joy? 
What would I look like if I put on humility? Come on, just try it on. You can try on a couple. Don't be shy. All right, now, here's what we're going to do as we close. When you have it on, when you put that thing on, I want you to stand up, and I want you to, like you're wearing a nice suit, I want you to stand like you just put on a $1,000 suit or a $1,000 dress. I want you to stand up in confidence in Him. And it's just an act of faith. You just It's just a simple act of faith. It's an activation. You're going, man, I'm, all right. When you know you got it, And this is a place you can come back to. This is a place you can revisit time and time again. Yeah, and just wear it before the Lord. Just stand before Him in that garment. Just stand before Him. Put a smile on your face. And smile back at Him because He's smiling at you saying, wow, you look so good. You look so good in me, says the Lord. You look so good in me, says the Lord. Oh, he's beaming over you. Come on, just close your eyes and see him smiling over you. It'll change everything. It'll warm your heart. The numb places, the callous places, the wounded places. Come on, let him smile over those areas in your life where you feel defeated. can we just thank him in your own words just for two minutes just out loud can you begin to praise him can you begin to thank him Lord we thank you God we thank you that this is home that we have permission come on let your let your thanksgiving your true praise just come out just from your heart you don't have to force anything if you don't feel if you don't see it you're not there that's okay you feel discouraged but just those of you are like man I wow thank you Jesus thank you for allowing me to put on humility Thank you for allowing me to wear kindness. Thank you, Lord, for my new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness, in true holiness. Come on, just two two more minutes together as as a family. Just give Him praise from your heart. You can lift a song. You can clap. Come on, just thank Him. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, God. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Jesus, it's you. It's you, Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, for looking at ourselves. Oh, we see you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let that garment of praise, Lord, rest upon this house. Let that garment of praise rest upon this house. Every family every marriage every heaviness every yoke every depression every suicidal thought lord i ask that your praise would break in true praise god true celebration for who you are let your light shine we love you lord we honor you in jesus name Amen. Give him a shout, clap, praise.